so we're going to do the Target, and we got to find something for dinner. Yep. Valerie Hacker has been spending a lot of time at home lately, more than she'd like, but the 53-year-old says she didn't really have a choice. I had to leave school early on a Tuesday because my father had fallen down and died of a heart attack while I was in class. Saturday I get the email saying that Everest is closing. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I really thought it was a joke. In April, Corinthian Colleges abruptly announced it would close all remaining Everest campuses, leaving thousands of students across the country stranded. This is what the campus in New York State looks like today. You're sitting on the couch, you're watching TV, and your life's passing you by. Hacker was hooked by these commercials. She became a full-time student at the school and was just 10 months shy of graduating from a medical coding and billing program. You know, you can get an education at any time in your life. But at 53, looking ahead for myself to be able to retire, you know, and live a little comfortable, I was hoping to do this and work from home and take care of my parents. In a statement on its website, Everest CEO says the closure was, quote, forced, and insists the schools did a, quote, good job for the students they served, end quote. Hello, little fella. But instead, Hacker was stuck with $30,000 of loan debt and nothing to show for it. When the federal government made an announcement in June, the news reports that followed led many Everest students to believe that they would be granted a full discharge of their loans. Attorney Maggie Robb says some were mistaken. The student loans for Rochester, New York students were not forgiven. What the federal government was announcing was the program that they are offering mostly to the California students. The federal government is going to offer it to others, but you have to be able to prove individually that you were defrauded by defi as defined by your, your state law by Everest Institute. They should, get they should reinstate those grants. So what I'm thinking is... A group of students meet on Thursday nights to lend each other support through the transition. Food, uh, gas for your car to get rid Hacker has been attending faithfully, and Carlos um, Santana, who's from the nonprofit Action for a Better well, Community, is there to help find the resources they need. The students are each applying for what's called a closed school discharge, and some are struggling to transfer to other schools. I had accrued 60 credits in my first year, and if I had chose to immediately go to Bryan and Stratton, they would have only accepted 16 of those 60. I know MCC only wanted to take 12 of my credits. That's it. Out of I had almost 216. The mother of two is one of only a few who recently got some good news. More than $30,000 forgiven. But at her age, what's next? I have to go back to work now for a few hours a week. I'm taking a job as a bus driver, um, a school bus driver. I've been working. I've been working all these dead end jobs my just about my whole career, and you know I have nothing to show for it except you know my dignity and my pride. Of course, yeah, the loans is dismissed, but what about the tap and the Pell grants, which amount to a lot of money, and some of that money could cover a lot of the costs. You know, some of these students don't have the extra money to pay for their expenses, and some of these grants help them survive. So. That's why, that's the number one goal. Now the tug of war continues with the government to see whether the student's grant money can be reinstated. That's for the ones who haven't given up on school just yet. I'm Sasha Ann Simons for the Innovation Trail.